Vete, si pudieras darles un poco de agua, por favor, te agradezco mucho. So, last night I was speaking about the power plants and how important it is to use them respectfully and to use them in a way that's specifically in tune with their ability to help us. To help us through times of evolution, times of uh, transition. For instance, when you have a divorce or when you have a newborn child, some things are uh, painful and some things are reason for celebration. But the ayahuasca always helps us tune into it at a much deeper and more profound level so we can assimilate it and utilize its energy and the beauty of the life that's around us at a deeper, more long-term level that's beyond time, that goes on from one year to the next, one lifetime to the next, and that implants itself deeply in our soul. And that's why we live and work here in the Amazon jungle, because here we are 35 kilometers from the nearest highway. We have very pure oxygen. We have plants that are living in a completely natural ecosystem and a completely supportive environment and neighborhood. Muchas gracias. And that is why all these plants are so vibrant, powerful, and, and, and useful as healing aids. So when we make a tea, for instance, out of the yerba luisa or out of the plants over here, the achote, whatever we do, it has an immediate impact of extreme power and, and clarity, and it goes directly into the body, and it has its impact, especially for you who have taken ayahuasca. Because when you take ayahuasca, the mother of all medicines, what that does is it opens the door and the mother gives permission to the children to come in and do the healing work. Say, so we send a plant in for the liver, send another one for the kidneys, send another one for the urinary, send another one to strengthen the heart, another one to clear out the communication center in the throat, and another one to clear up the cerebral cortex. It's confused. And so that's when I do the adjustment. I go down from your, from your crown chakra, I go down to your throat chakra, down to your heart chakra, down to your power center, which is where the energy comes from, right here, sexual center. But it's dedicated towards principally keeping security and keeping power and control. Now, when we go through the ayahuasca ceremonies, we pass from that control and that security to emotional realization that we're dependent on other people and that we're part of a community. We're part of a family. We're part of a nation. We're part of a, a group of colleagues. We're all dedicated to being together. We're not isolated. And that's where our emotional shock comes in. And we begin getting, becoming sorry for what we've done sorry for what we didn't do, and we start aspiring to greater heights in the future. Then we pass through that to the crown chakra, and there we see, okay, well, there's a problem here, there's a problem there, there's a problem there, but I'm over-exaggerating. I can fix it quick. I'm going to call mom, I'm going to call dad, I'm going to tell them to put food out for the dog, I'm going to call my old girlfriend, I'm going to call my new girlfriend, I'm going to put everything in sync and tell them the truth. And then I get on to more interesting things. Because we have an opportunity of growth here. Because we're being invited into eternity. Into the ability to see beyond this life. And see what our responsibility is to be authentic. To be clear. And to be powerful. And a positive influence. On all the people who come in contact with us. We have to be a blessing. Because if we're not a blessing, basically we're dead weight. Or we are a curse, one of the two. Either we be positive and we help, or we become useless for the light. We become powerful for the dark, because the part of the human energy field that's trying to bring humanity down is strong. And so we have to be extremely strong and capable to be able to say, I'm sorry, but my, me and my house... 
we will follow this particular road. And don't bother discussing it because it's my house. So that's the way we work, okay? That's the way you work. You have a temple inside you. You have temples inside you. You have to keep it clean. You have to make sure that you do not desecrate it by bad company, by bad actions, or by things that you don't feel good about. Because every minute you spend on this planet is very important. The ayahuasca makes that clear to us. And it teaches us clearly and strongly that these things are God's gift to us to guide us through this particular veil into a clearer space and into the next phase of our existence. But we can live heaven right here on earth. And I'm doing the best I can to do it, okay? <laughs> I enjoy myself incredibly, and I love it here. And I really have chosen well in where I'm going to live and what kind of work I'm going to do. But we're still not in paradise, okay? We try to emanate paradise from inside of us, and we try to be healthy, strong, clear, and authentic, useful, and honest. And we try to marginalize people who are not that way so that we can get them off to the side and let them play their own game. In other words, drowned in their own soup. Because we need our integrity. And we have to stay separate from that. So we learn how to choose a company. We learn how to choose our environment. And we learn how to choose our diets and our activities. And we have complete, not only necessity to do that, but we have the complete God sent and birthright to do that. We are in charge of our lives. We're responsible for what we produce. <clears throat> if we don't produce what we should have produced, and we give some f lame excuse that I was really depressed, <laughs> believe me, Santa Peter's not going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to buy it. So you've got to really try to live every day as if you really are responsible for what happens to you. And so, fortunately, out here, we're away from everybody, almost, except for the people who can write us on the internet and call us on the phone. And, and we have very clean air. And so we have a wild water to swim in, wild water to bathe in, and we have wild people to visit with. Because anybody who comes this far is a wild man. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, and so, you know, these guys are friends of mine. They've been here for a while, and you are also close friends of mine. And I really appreciate you coming here and listening to what we have to offer and experiencing very personally the ayahuasca medicine. Now, this is going to enter into you in a very deep, deep level, and it's going to continue working through any cultural blocks, any belief system blocks, any physical or personality blocks. And it's going to keep live, bringing you strongly and directly to your destiny of realizing your complete best state of affairs in any culture, in any place, in any time, and giving you the strength to survive bad times hard times, beautiful times, and questionable, neutral, boring times. But always keep your focus and your beam forward, realizing that we are not here in vain. We are here to live, to enjoy, and to give glory to our Creator, and in turn, to bring evolution forward for the next generation. And I really feel pleased in spite of the fact that I make a lot of mistakes, I don't deny it, but I've been blessed with having two beautiful daughters who are carrying the banner forward for my family. And also, I have a career, and I have a job, and I have a lot of beautiful people who are helping me and working with me, friends and employees. And so I've been extremely blessed in spite of some of my bad decisions, but most of my decisions have been very good, and I find that the vast majority of them have brought me forward, even the ones that were questionable, to a better, faster, more beautiful day. And so always trust the Spirit to guide you. They say, God's always been taking you forward, but there's some points on the path where you don't see the footsteps. That's because you couldn't walk, and somebody was carrying you. 
and deposit you on the other end. So sometimes you cannot walk on your own, so your footprints in the sand disappear. But that's because somebody scooped you up and said, okay, start over, up ahead. So we're not alone. We're never alone, no matter what we're doing. We're always being cared for and being guided. Sometimes the most difficult things become the most positive, and in the long run, the strongest to helping you save time and move forward at a gallop. So remember, don't pass judgment too quick. Always keep moving forward on faith and power, and you'll be very pleased you did, because in one lifetime, you can get as much advancement made that some people don't get done in 10 or 20 or 30. In other words, you're jumping forward, you're becoming a bodhisattva, you're becoming a service on the planet to all those who watch and all those who can imitate you because you can preach all day and all night and nobody will listen to you. But I promise you, whatever you do, that's what they will copy. I found that with my children. They copy me. I can talk to them until I'm blue in the face. And they take it with a grain of salt. But what turns out is they become exactly like I was in the long run. Here they are, 24 and 27, and they follow in my footsteps. They paid no attention to what I said. They just watched what I did. <laughs> so if you want to be a positive influence, then be a stellar example of what you want to pass on. Now, before we uh, walk back to our houses, I'm going to show you a little bit about a few medicinal plants that are going to help a lot, okay? So, let's go over and see some of these first. Now, here's one. This is called noni. Now, this is a blood cleanser. It's a very beautiful plant, and it's sold all over the world now as a blood cleanser and um, a treatment for uh, toxic blood and a preventative for cancer. And so it's extremely potent. Now we have 60 trees here of Noni. And here we drink it in a very concentrated brew. And, uh, and if any of you have toxic problems, but from all your clean skin, I don't see a problem there. But anyhow, Noni is a very strong potent blood cleanser and it works on multiple levels. What does, it, does it make you sick? Uh, no, it doesn't make you sick. I mean, it could cause a little nausea, you know, but you know, let's go over. I'll, I'll show you the factory we have here for processed noni. So perhaps we have a little bit over there to drink. Let me see if I have. Yeah, here we go. This is the active part of the plant right here. This pod right here. This is where the medicine is, okay? It's an extremely concentrated antioxidant cleanser of the blood. Now, when you put this in a pot, it will ferment. It will turn into liquid. So let's go over here and see if they've made any recently. But you just have to take this, and the, the heat of the jungle will uh, process it into juice. And then you can drink it. And it will have an impact, without a doubt, on your system. It will lower your blood pressure slightly and it will cleanse your liver and your, your, your lymph system. Now, what we do is that we put this right in this thing here. And as you can see, it ferments and it turns into liquid, right? So it does that purely on the heat. So we don't have to do anything to it. We don't add anything to it. And then what we come up with is this juice. And you can drink a little bit of this. It's a blood cleanser. It's just extract from the noni. It has no additives whatsoever. Tastes like blue cheese. It tastes exactly like blue cheese. Yeah, I agree. And I happen to like blue cheese. So, that's a blood cleanser. So if you have, like say, um, marks all over your skin, or, or your eyes are really dull, your skin is very clear, by the way, dear. And, and so, then you can drink about a third of a, of a bottle a day, 
and it will uh, cleanse the blood. Now, it will lower your blood pressure slightly. I have high blood pressure, so it won't be a bad thing. We we'll have another drink then. <laughs> mm. So yeah, it's beautiful stuff. And some people go overboard. They say, oh, it's a blood cleanser. They drink a whole bottle and then they'll have diarrhea for a day. Mm. But that's not necessarily counterproductive because it cleanses the body. But you do want to be gentle, you know, and easy with it. You don't want to uh, overdo it. If you're going to do it therapeutically, you do about a third of a bottle a day. And so if anybody would like to do this, I'll have somebody prepare it for you. Okay. Anybody want to take it with them? No. I'll take it with yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's check out a few more plants. So are there any plants that are natural antivirals? I'm curious. Well, they say like um, um, uh, grapefruit is. Well, grapefruit is, and it's a cleanser of the uh, of the liver and the gallbladder. I mean, it's very specific to that. Uh, and uh, this is another one that's an antiviral. This is uh, lemongrass, and this is an antiviral for the urinary tract and for the, the kidneys. And it's also used as a condiment. Mm, it smells really good. It smells like the lemon drops. Yeah, it's lemon grass. And so it's extremely, I love the way it smells. extremely useful. And you've probably been drinking that, you yeah. know, mm. while you've been here. Because it's very useful in helping you to change and to move quickly through changes and healing processes. And that's why it's so it's so useful for us. Now this is a plant that we use for children when they are teething or when they're getting their teeth, okay? And so this is called gold button. And so if each of you would take a bite of that and you take one of these and just chew on it and you'll see how powerful it is. And then you'll see why what we do is generally, when a child is teething, we'll mash up five of these and with a Q-tip put them on their gums so that they do not scream all the time. And we continue to love them until the <laughs> teeth come in. And so it's very important for us to, you know, keep their gums nice and numb so they can handle the, the discomfort of having their real teeth come in. And this is incredible ballast for that. Yeah. Mm. So, let's go on up. Now this is a plant that we use to reduce the fever in the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys. And it also serves to grow hair on the head. So when we soak it in water, <coughs> we can put it on our head and it'll make hair grow. Hmm. So it's called Caguena. I have this same herb growing in the garden outside of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and it works like a charm. It's just that I'm too lazy to use it. <laughs> yeah. Now this is another really beautiful plant that I use all the time. It's called Santa Maria. Okay. Now Santa Maria draws poisons out of the body through the skin. So if you have a wasp bite, for instance, what you would do is you would chop this up real good like this. Put a little flowered water on it. And you put it right on the wasp bite. And then it would suck that poison out through the skin. And then the poison does not have to go through the bloodstream, through the liver and the stomach, doing all that damage and making your body work so hard. Pulls it right out at the source. So like poison ivy and things like that? Because I have poison ivy right here, actually. Okay, well then what we're going to do is we're going to do a treatment on you. And we'll do a treatment as soon as we get back to my house. I can do it in about five minutes. And so is all I need is a few leaves. And this will be plenty. Cool. I think I have a few more growing over here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just And so we can fix we can fix you up in, in a very short time. And I'll take enough so that tomorrow in the morning, or maybe later tonight, I can do another treatment on you. And then by that time, after two treatments, generally speaking, we're talking about complete solution because we'll be able to pull that out because that's pretty super crisp. That's no big deal. That saves me a trip to the pharmacy. Right. 
really strong too. Okay, so this next one I'm going to show you is called Cat's Claw. Now, Cat's Claw is probably the best known plant in the accidental world. This is called Cat's Claw because of these little thorns on the bushes, on the, on the, the, the branch. And it's an immune booster and an anti-inflammatory. And it's broad spectrum. In other words, it works over the entire body. It works on the whole body. And it has no negative side effects, so we use it all the time. How do you use it? You take it inside your body. You can either brew it into a tea. You can take this, you can boil that stalk, along with a bunch of other stalks, and it makes a nice dark brown bitter tea. The other way to take it is to make it into powder and put it into gelatin capsules and take it. Now, for your Occidental lifestyles in San Francisco, Buenos Aires and uh, Tokyo, <laughs> wherever you live. <laughs> you just go down to the to the store, the, the local health food store, and you buy yourself capsules of cat's claw, and you pop three in your mouth in the morning on your way out the door, along with your vitamin B. And the plant goes into your body, into your bloodstream. It protects you from being sick. It increases your immune response. It disinflames any part of your body that may be irritated. And so it has no negative side effects. When you take those plants into your world, into your chemistry, in spite of the fact that you're living in a modern city, it will connect you with the wild world outside where the medicine comes from, and it will protect you. And so do it. You don't have to worry about being complete and making teas in your kitchen every morning. No, just buy some really high quality capsules, pop a few in your mouth, and go out with your cappuccino, it's going to still impact you the same. It will give you the same protection and the same illumination as if you were doing it here with me. So this is ayahuasca. It looks like a big piece of ayahuasca just fell down. This is all ayahuasca. It's a tower of ayahuasca. You see how this ayahuasca goes all the way up? Okay. Because we planted this five or six years ago. We take this, we put it underneath the grass. It goes up, intertwines, it finds something to climb up. And it continues propagating and propagating and propagating. It continues going forward and Eventually, it dominates the forest. So look, here's a tower. There's another one up there. There's another one sideways. There's another one over there. This is ayahuasca par excellence. This is powerful ayahuasca. It's wild. And why is it so wild? Well, because it's in its neighborhood. It has all the ballast and all the support it could ever ask for. It has all of its daughters, sons, cousins, fathers and mothers around and this is the king of the medicine in the jungle ayahuasca now the partner of the ayahuasca is chakruna which is the feminine counterpart and these two have to be fused as you saw yesterday when we cooked the medicine and as you know the chakruna was presented to us as the animator. This as the, the main manipulator. In other words, this goes into your body. It puts to sleep the enzyme guard and makes it go to sleep so that the chakruna can run by and affect you for four or five hours and give you phantasmagorical visions of eternity and of your future and past life. And so this is a way of stepping beyond the usual limits that are programmed into our body. It's very much alchemy. It's very stealthy and powerful alchemy that was, came down to us from the spirit world through the Indian cultures. And when we ask the Indians, how did you know that? Oh, we know from the spirit. The spirit told us. He told us through an old Indian who was about to die. He said, tie my body onto a tree, out of my body will grow the vine that will teach you how to heal yourselves and others and how to understand your world and the universe you're in. And when my wife dies, bury her body at the foot of the tree and 
out of her body will grow the complement to mine. So we have to boil the two of them together like we did yesterday, and we appear with a beautiful, powerful formula of magical brew that allows us to visit eternity for four or five hours and then come back down completely sane, clear, and healthy with no negative side effects. And that's why this has become my main instrument for doing healing and psychic exploration and for opening the door to the other plants that have an incredible impact, especially when the psychosomatic blockages are taken away by the ayahuasca. <laughs> so let's go see the cocoon, huh? Right over here. Now the other thing that you have to realize is that we did not have written records back then. Uh, the human race didn't have written records. In the European, the European races developed that, along with the, uh, the Catholic Church, about 700 years ago. But the people that developed this knowledge and this folklore were people that were 100% in oral traditions. And so they only talked. They only talked around the campfire. They talked in the wee hours of the morning about secrets. And they would pass on information through stories. They were storytellers. And why did they pass things on in stories? Because they knew that if they just gave facts, nobody would pay attention. They wouldn't remember them. They had to embellish them with stories. They had to make the ayahuasca vine into an old Indian. They had to make the chakruna leaf into a pretty young woman that was living with him all his life for people to actually want to remember it. So they made stories up to pass along scientific knowledge and also to pass along values. And one of the values there is that the feminine and the masculine have to unite because if they don't unite, there's no future. There's no solutions. And so the feminine and the masculine has to mesh. And it has to become another generation. And it has to be done very powerfully and very, very, very prudently and with immense concentration and focus at the realization of how important that process is. It's just like if it was always dark, we would have a problem. And if it was always light, we'd have another one. And if we had no eclipses, we had no thunderstorms, and we had no days of sun and snow, we would have a problem. What we need is balance. So it's trying to teach the people is that everything that has power is in balance. It's a combination of feminine and masculine. Feminine and masculine have to unite in a balanced formula. And it has to be indetectable which one is showing its colors because it has to be so completely meshed that you have basically entities. If you're going to be powerful healers, they have to be both feminine and masculine all at the same time. And you're not going to be able to put your finger on Is she being really macho or is she being really feminine? I can't tell. But she certainly gets her work done. And the same with a guy. So if you want a measuring stick to check out healers, check that out. So who is this guy? You know. Can I put my finger on what he's doing? Well, if you can, he probably won't be very good at what he does. Okay? Because it's got to be shrouded. It's got to be very nebulous. But the kids go, they hear that story around the campfire when they're five or six, and they go in thinking, okay, well, everything's a mess of mom and dad. So dad's a prick, and mom's a bitch. But it doesn't matter, because the two of them together are me, and I'm perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it forward. You see what I mean? So they say, what we need is a mix. And then they grow up and they realize that they're just like <laughs> their mom and their husband is just like their dad. But they continue moving forward and they have an understanding of how energy works on the planet. You know? And then they allow themselves to actually be a positive influence. But they have a certain detachment and a certain humor about the way things work. And they become a little less self-righteous about it. So that's what we have here. But we have it not in just a fairy tale. We have it in a sonic boom that hits right in the middle of your heart when you take the right amount. And it'll transform you and help you to save 
years and years of struggle and clarify exactly what you're supposed to do next. And I really admire your courage and your decisiveness in coming here to learn that with us and for enjoying yourselves here, for learning how to up-level your life and up-level your influence on people around you to make you become a stronger blessing, first of all to yourselves and next of all to the people who are close to you. So thanks so much for your attention. Thanks, I really God. enjoy your company. And I look forward to doing another ceremony tomorrow. Hey. All right, thanks. Thank thanks, Scott.